In this tutorial we're going to look at how to create basic 2D shapes in Grasshopper. Um, so we'll start if we go to um, Curve. A lot of those basic shapes are under the primitive component list, so circles, rectangles, different um, ways of creating lines. So let's start with a basic line. Um, to create a line you need a start point and an end point, so we can just go ahead and in Rhino um, we'll just create two points and then we'll start with the um, point parameter which is a container object and we'll set one point and select the first point and I'll just copy paste that point and then right click set one point and I'll select the second point so I now have my first point and my second point and I can then plug the first point into A and the second point into B and it will create a line between those points if I move these points in Rhino it'll update everything um, in Grasshopper as well of course I could construct these points directly in Grasshopper using the construct point component so either way works totally fine. The other kind of line you can create um, is called the line SDL which is uh, a, lo a component I use frequently. Um, SDL stands for start, direction, and length. So the first thing we need is a point um, which is the base point from which it would start and then a direction of the point. And we haven't talked about vectors yet, but vectors are directions. And you, when you're building something in Grasshopper, you need to tell the program which direction you want to produce the geometry in. Um, and when you draw it in Rhino, you just kind of click, and that automatically creates a direction. But in, in Grasshopper, you're not clicking, so you have to um, explicitly say which direction. So you'll see there's a vector menu here. And if you go to the final uh, category, it's vectors. And so the three basic ones are the unit X, unit Y, and unit Z. So I'll just start with this unit X, and the X, Y, Z correspond to the Cartesian coordinate system. So uh, the red um, axis is the X, the, the green one is the Y, and then blue is the vertical one, the Z. So if I use X in this case, that can be the direction. And so now we just need a length. So we can produce a number slider. I'll just create a slider from negative 10 to 10.00 and then plug that into length. You can see it will then draw the line um, given uh, these parameters that you plug into the component. So that's line SDL. Um, the next one if we go back to curve primitive is the circle CNR and so CNR stands for center uh, normal so that would be the orientation of the circle and then radius the size of the circle. So we can use, let's just try using this other point. I'll just copy paste that point. Um, so that'll be the other end of the line. Um, the normal, by default, it'll use the XY plane of the grid. Um, we'll talk about planes later, but if you go to uh, vector, these are all the different plane orientations you can use. So you can actually create a plane that's on like the XZ axis or the YZ, but we'll just use the default XY axis for right now. Um, so that's the orientation of the circle and then we can just copy and paste copy and paste that slider and you use that for the radius so you can see uh, as I toggle that um, you see it automatically converts a negative number to the positive so uh, in terms of a radius of course you can only have a positive number uh, so that's what's happening there um, we also can create other kind of uh, primitive geometries so if we go back to primitive um, one that I like is the circle three point so if I just add another point here in Rhino, uh, I'll just copy this point down here, set one point, and I'll set that point. Um, it'll basically just make a circle using those three points as its guide. Copy those two original points down there, plug the first one into A, second one to B, third one into C. You can see it creates a circle that goes through all three of those points. Um, the next one is the polygon, so curve, primitive, um, polygon, which is down here, um, and the this basically looks for a plane. So again, we can use our X Y plane, which is the basic default. By the way, I don't actually need to plug this in. If I don't plug a plane in, it'll just by default use an X Y plane. Um, we can then use the radius. I'll just copy and paste this number slider. Um, we then have the number of sides for the polygon or the segments. So this should be a whole number, uh, integer. Um, so I'll just go from a number slider from 3, because you can't have a polygon with less than 3 sides, which would be a triangle. Um, so I'll go 3 less than 10. 
plug that in and so that makes a little triangle and then if I increase that to four it makes a rectangle and etc. Um, you can also fill it the corners of that um, if you want to. The next one is the rectangle so curve primitive and I'm not going to show all of these so you can kind of experiment with all the different ones uh, but they're all essentially the same you just have inputs and those inputs then create the geometry using that component. Um, so we'll just use the rectangle here you can see with each of these there's different kinds, different ways of creating those. So like multiple ways of creating a circle um, and then multiple ways also of creating a rectangle. So I'm just using the basic rectangle which just asks me for a plane. So again XY plane. In this case I just won't plug it in so you can see that it still works. Um, you then have an X uh, coordinate or an X dimension. So that's the length and then we can copy paste that for the width as well. So you can see there's your rectangle. You can see it's getting really a little cluttered so um, you can always preview off by selecting all of these previous components. Right click and preview off and that way we can just see the rectangle um, in this view.